Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to create a flag using the cloth simulator. Um, in this one we will be using the Blender render uh, engine so you can switch that now and we will begin. So go ahead and delete the default cube and insert a plane. Uh, if we go into top mode uh, we can see we've got a plane. Uh, go ahead, scale that up a little bit along the uh, along all axes, and then scale it along the X. Uh, about something like that should be fine. Now I'm going to rotate this along the X by 90 degrees, so it looks like that. Now I'm also going to move the camera by hitting Control Alt one on my numpad. Um, I've actually changed this because on my operating system it will minimize the window if I hit control alt zero so that's uh, I've switched it a little bit so I'm just gonna rotate this around a little bit so this plane is now gonna act as our flag mm, there we go so now we can start getting into our physics. So go ahead and hit the physics tab with the uh, flag selected and click cloth. If we go and hit Alt A now, it will fall and won't look very good. So go ahead and actually first in edit mode, hit subdivide and turn this all the way up to 10. Next, select two vertices along the edge and hit control G and assign to group. Um, so that it doesn't fall, check pinning and click the group. So these two vertices will be uh, holding what, as the rest will try to fall. So if we hit Alt A now, it will act a little bit more like a flag not too bad. Um, could be better though. So that looks decent. Go ahead and check the uh, cotton presets. I don't know if it actually changes it at all for this, but it... yeah, it looks fine. Now I'm also going to give it a uh, subsurf modifier, so hit control 1 and then click smooth maybe a little bit more there that'll make it a little bit silkier looking and a little bit more realistic there so that looks pretty good um, now it's pretty much time to get working on the material so uh, Unless you have a country in mind, I am going to create a flag for Blender. So go into GIMP and whoops, um, create a new image. This uh, should be fine. And then I'm going to go find the icon for Blender. So, you can probably download this off the internet. If you can't find it in your uh, file system, um, there we go. Uh, if you can't find it in your file system, just go to Blender's website and download Blender for the .tar.bz, I think, and then you can find the uh, icon under icons and you can just pull it out there. Um, if you're in Windows, I don't really know. Uh, I'm not really a Windows person. But anyway, uh, here's the icon and we can work with it from here. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. make sure to have these linked otherwise it'll get all weird so okay. 
Okay, and kind of center that there. Now I'm going to create a new layer. And this is all just personal preference. Um, not really sure what I'm doing here, but eh, just for fun. Okay. And then if you hit Control I and uh, click this airbrush thing, you can create a nice little like a shadow effect. So. Yeah, you can see that. And then I'm going to create a new layer. And get that color there. Fill. And hit Control I to invert the selection. Mm, nope. And if you hit shift, you can make it draw in a line. And then if you hit control, it'll snap to 90, 40, or that looks like 30, then 45, 60, and back to 30 and 15. So 15 degree increments, which is nice. So nice for drawing nice straight lines. And there we go. A uh, little blender flag there. And may move this down a little bit. That looks pretty good. So, for some reason in uh, GIMP 2.8 you're uh, not able to actually save as uh, .png or .jpg. You can only save as .xcf, but if you go File and then Export To, um, you get to save it as a .png or .jpg. So I'm just going to save that as flag.png. Um, and just hit export when you're done saving it. Um, so if you're happy with it and know you're not going to edit it, you don't have to save it as a .xcf. Uh, I'm just going to close it. Go away, GIMP. Okay, so now we have a, um, a texture to apply to our flag. So under materials, hit new and call it flag, and then go to textures and give it an image texture. Hit open and select flag. If we render that now, It'll look terrible because the light's behind it, and it'll still look terrible, but at least it has a texture. So let's go and make it look a little better. I'm going to give it a flat projection in the preview and turn down the intensity of the specularity, and then I think turn down the hardness. That looks a little better. Next, I'm also going to change the lamp to a Hemi and hit Alt-R to uh, reset the angle and pull it down along the Y or along the Z and rotate it to point at the flag. So that'll give it good lighting. Yep. And if you don't like the rounded edges on your flag, just insert a couple loop cuts to tighten up those corners, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. So if we render that at this point, it's kind of a floppy flag, so let's give it some wind. So I'm going to move the 3D cursor along the X over to the side and hit shift A and where's the force field? Wind. And I'm just going to pull it off to the side that way it can kind of actually have an effect on our flag. If it's perfectly in line since this is a plane it will go to either side and have absolutely no effect whatsoever. 
So, just pull it off along the Y a little bit, and then rotate along the Y 90 degrees. And under the physics tab, uh, change the strength. I'm going to just get that where I want it. And that's working a little better. So if we turn the wind all the way down, or into a vacuum cleaner, uh, <laughs> whoops, there we go. It just kind of sits there like a limp cloth. And if we turn it up, it blows around like it's in the wind. If you're noticing that your flag is dropping a little bit too much, go under cloth field weights and turn down gravity. So, there, that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to move the end positions to 260 and then start at 50. That way it's already kind of moving by the time uh, our view starts. So that's looking pretty good. Um, don't think there's too much more that needs to be doing. Um, let's uh, give the sky a texture, or uh, yeah. So go in and hit File, and User Preferences and Add-ons, and in the search bar hit imp or type in Import uh, Images. What this will do, it's not too special. I mean, it's just adding a, uh, a texture, an image texture to a plane, but it is, or this uh, plugin is special in that it'll give it the right aspect ratio, um, which is kind of a nice thing. Let's see. So go import image as plane, and I have to find that. So I use Skies 309 off of uh, cgtextures.com, and I'm going to rotate that by 90. And under Display, I'm going to hit uh, Texture Solids, so that way we can see what we're working with. That's really way too close. Okay. So, next I'm also going to uh, change the shading to shadeless. That way uh, it's bright and isn't affected by shadows. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, finally, I think we're going to make a flagpole. So go ahead and select those, hit cursor select, and s create a cylinder. And just pull it off to the side like that. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, and hit smooth. Finally, I think we should add an edge split modifier, and that should be pretty good. Hit new, uh, give it a new material, let's call it uh, steel. Turn, I think, to blend. Turn up the, or turn, I think up the hardness, yeah. About 80 should be good. And mirror, turn up reflectivity a little bit. 
depth should be fine. It's looking pretty good now. Okay, I think that's pretty close to being ready for rendering. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, mostly for learning about the cloth simulator and uh, how to use force fields to influence it and pinning that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave comments or suggestions in the commentary below and have a good evening.